We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and this episode is a few weeks in the making because we have officially uh, seen all of the liveries um, and we have all of the opinions, and so we are going to be rating all of the 2024 main car primary liveries for, for this season. I'm really excited to I'm talk so about I'm so excited. Them. This is an episode that I've been waiting to make, very excited to very excited to make. We didn't do this last season, obviously, because we started during the summer break when liveries were already out. So I'm so excited to talk liveries. And yeah, we, talk we've had down about liveries. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been really, really interesting this year. I think that there have been some design choices, some, let's call it safe moves and some embarrassments. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have my favorites. I definitely have ones where I'm mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm, what were you doing? And there are also some where it's like, is this 2023 or 2024? Because I can't tell. So yes. I think we kind of run the gamut on on liveries this year. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been very interesting. And what we did to make this a little bit of fun for the both of us as we record this episode is we don't know our like. I don't know Emily's opinions on the cars and Emily doesn't know mine. She doesn't know the ratings that we're going to be using um, for full disclosure and explanatory things. Cause somebody got mad at us on Instagram the other day, we are discussing the looks of the liveries rather than doing a deep dive into the changes of the cars themselves. Um, because that is incredibly technical and not part of of what we're doing here. We are we are just looking at the liveries themselves. Um, we will discuss the cars in the order that they're dropped. Yeah. Also, because if we were going to sit here and talk about the changes in the car design, we would be here for a very long time. And also, I'm sure we'll talk about the design of the car throughout the season. So yeah. for right now, we're just going to see what makes them pretty or what makes us want to vomit. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, we're, what, that's what we're here for. Um, so like I said, we have secretly graded each car with a ranking of either one through five or A to F, depending on who's speaking. Um, one slash F are the worst and A slash five are the best. Um, we Sorry will also about be this crowning... in advance. I, I choose, I prefer letters. Catherine prefers numbers. Just deal with it. Welcome and, to going and we kind track. of just forgot to to get on the same page with that when we were planning these because we were planning them separately. So what um, happens when we don't do this together? Yeah, exactly. One yeah, of us goes this you, way, you get, the other goes this way. You get you get some fun. Um, we will also be crowning our livery of the year and also our carbon fiber nightmare of the year slash biggest disappointment of an F one car. Um, Again, yeah. this is my call to action for a minimum paint requirement. I will say that in advance. Um, I think I've talked about that several times on our uh, winter break. Yeah, winter. Sorry. Saying winter break is so hard for me because it's summer right now for me in, yeah. in the Southern Hemisphere. And I always have to like rethink about it. But I know I've talked about my hate of carbon fiber and my want of a minimum paint requirement on several of our winter break recaps. Um, so this is just my, you know, call to action again, please require it next year. Yeah, I, I actually, I have this for like later in the rundown, but we can talk about it now. We might as well. Um, but if like, especially if you look at an F1 car from 2018 compared to an F1 car now, obviously they look different for a lot of reasons, but the biggest is that the 2018 cars and the earlier cars, they were actually colorful. And I know that, you know, peeling back as much paint as possible gives you, you know, a little, you know, a a hundredth of a second more of speed, but get like the cars still need to be, to be, you know, fun to look at and easy to pick out on track. Um, You know, last year we had an issue. One of the Alfa Romeo special liveries looked just like the Mercedes um, because they were both basically just black cars with little dashes of silver. Um, So, you know, I understand, you know, we want to make these cars as fast as possible, but I don't think that there's an issue with regulating something that at most is going to give you what 
you know, a couple hundredths that you could also probably squeeze out somewhere else in the car. Put the paint back on. I was going to say, yeah, put the paint back on, engineer a better car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not exactly. Hard. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the basically the, 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 the moral <laughs> of the story. And I, you know, if I, I will, I will happily sacrifice a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of speed for a car that looks like what an F1 car is supposed to look like. But see, that's the fan perspective to the team perspective, because I'm pretty sure the teams are like, well, the car is the car. car. (laughs) And we don't care what it looks like. We want it to go fast. So fan versus team. But they have to meet somewhere in the middle. Wholeheartedly disagree. That that is something that should be regulated. But anyway, let us dive in uh, to... We're going to start with the first announced to the most recent announced. So starting with McLaren for their surprise drop ending with Red Bull. And that's kind of how we're going through. If you think it's random, it's not, I promise. So, okay, Catherine, McLaren. So first things first, major differences is they nixed all the fun bits of blue outside of the wheel covers. um, And they made the flaps on the front wing fully orange, which I like. Um, That said, I personally miss the blue. And I think that you know, just the the two color orange and black loses some definition, some excitement. Um, and I personally prefer last year's car. Um, it what it I was thinking about this last night when I was when I was doing up my notes, um, and that the car really reminds me of like when I was in middle school and high school, and I would like have a sharpie and I'd like draw doodles, and then I'd color it in with a marker of a different color, and it would be like black and another color, and like this just reminds me of like that bla- like black and orange version of those doodles that I used to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, um, I am sad they got rid of the blue because now it just like, I mean, I love papaya. It's a really, it's very easily visible on the track. You can always see the McLaren, but now their car is just like screaming Halloween. And I am one of those people yes. that you can't put orange and black together without a third accent color or something. Cause otherwise it's just Halloween. That's all I'm going to be thinking about when I see the car is just Halloween. Um, but that actually reminds I, me, it's also my high school colors. Oh, really? My high school colors are black and orange. And I'm like, oh, oh it's, it's the go. Beverly Hills high school Norman's car. That's, that's what we got now. <laughs> Great. Yeah. But I do love that they kept the Google tires. That's like my yes. favorite, my second favorite sponsorship logo placement next to the branding of Duracell, the battery on Williams, which I'll talk about later, but I'm glad they kept the Google tires. Um, I really want to know. I'm curious. So I know, I don't know if it was a few races or like every race last year, they had like that side branding on the car that would like change throughout the race. Like somehow with technology, they had it changing. I I wonder if that's returning this year. Like, I wonder if that was successful for brands or not, or the difference in like sponsorship levels, how much they had to pay to, if their logo was being changed out throughout the race or if they found that that wasn't successful with sponsors and they're just nixing it all together. Um, so that was my one question about this livery, if they're doing that again this year, like they did last year. Um, and then, I think I'm sorry. No. Yeah, okay, because I didn't see anything about it and I know it was like a big deal last year, so I figured they nixed it. But the last thing I want to say about McLaren, and it's not necessarily McLaren, but it's how they did the livery drop of like randomly dropping it just so that they could be the first. I'm sorry, personal opinion. I feel like this came right from the mouth of Zach Brown and it's giving super loser energy of this is our plan date, but oh, we're going to beat everybody else and do this random drop and whatever. Like, I think that's stupid. I, I don't know. It's just like, you don't, if you plan a day, then you plan a day. Like, I don't understand why we have to have two drops, but um, I didn't love that. But I feel like that's yeah, such a I Zach don't... Brown thing to be first. I don't know. I, I really don't think that we really needed the, you know, we had the the livery drop and then the car itself drop. And I just, because like most of the times these show cars are not the actual car that we're going to see out right. in testing, you know, next week anyway. So it was just like, it was another thing to do to keep McLaren more relevant in a quiet corner of the week um, when, you know, everything has been dominated lately about Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari in a year. Um, so it was, it was really McLaren saying, Hey, we're still here. We're contenders. Yeah. Yo. I don't know. I just thought that was dumb and not needed. 
Because this is the thing. You open up the door for everyone next year to do just like 27 drops, which I think, I mean, I get it. We're in the off season. We need something to talk about. We need, you know, some, some clickbaity things, but at the same time, just plan your drop and drop the car. (laughs) I don't know. That's just Give us time to prepare for preparing for your car to drop. Yeah. So anyways, so McLaren, what did you grade McLaren? I gave the McLaren a high two, but I did give them a two out of five. Okay. So I gave them a B, but I gave the drop an F. (laughs) So I do like the car. I like the, you know, the tires will always be high high up there for me, but um, I ended up giving them a B, but I'd say a low B. So. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. That's it's I, when I, we're like you are rounded up to a B in school. Like that's kind of where McLaren hit for me. I didn't do like A yeah. pluses or minuses. I just did A B A through F. So I'd say this is like a B borderlining a C. Yeah, but this, I give them credit for, for changing like, the I, car. I couldn't give them a three. I I couldn't bring myself to do it. But you know, maybe I'm just a really harsh critic, and I really miss that blue. Yeah, I really miss the blue, but I did give them credit for changing up the livery. So that's, that's kind of where I stood. Yeah. But oh, then we move to Haas. They're a car. They're on the grid. They're a car. Honestly, the very the only impressionable thing that I was left with was Chipotle's on their livery <laughs> this year. And clearly you can tell I haven't been in the US for a long time. I'm missing Chipotle. But I walked away from their livery job only like remembering Chipotle. It was very, like, not rel- like not um, memorable. Sorry, words. Yeah. I don't know. I just didn't love it. it it's all a lot of carbon fiber, mm-hmm. um, which we were assuming that it would be this year. But in the small details that they did change, it does look, like, sharper and cleaner. Where last year, I don't want to say cartoony, but it was, like, very big bubble letters. This year, it's, like, sharper and crisper, and it looks more like a belongs in f1 if that makes sense um with that with the font design i like their new font like the big hoss on the side i do like that upgrade from 2023 um but they took away the white it's all it's like very minimal white now black and red and the black is all carbon fiber so again going to my argument of requiring paint um i don't know i i didn't love this one yeah, they're they're obviously, you know, minimizing, you know, the amount of paint to get as much out of the speed of the car as possible. We know that they're already predicting that they're going to be way in the back of the grid to start off. But but yeah, it it didn't wow me. It's, you know, they replaced, you know, the the white with with, you know, dark gray silver. Um, you know, there's more carbon on the nose last year. The nose was full white. Um, it is it it didn't really wow me. It is a, it is a car that will be on the grid this year, that we will look Sorry. at from. Afar. Can we can we repeat? It will be a car at the back of the grid this year. <laughs> yes, yes, and maybe if there's like nothing exciting going up on the front, we will see the car at the back of the grid. Who knows? Who I knows? I don't know. Sorry, Haas. So, that said. I give them a three out of five. Oh, interesting. Okay. And yeah. I give them a C. So cool. We're flip-flopping a little bit. Yeah. So it's funny how we're like kind of in the alignment, but like not at the same time. Like we have a lot of the same comments, but our grading system is very different. <laughs> very different. Yeah. And like, you know, not that I want to like grade the cars against each other because then we would just be here forever. Um, oh, but, forever. you know, I just, you know, it, it just, I think. It had a little bit more, which is why I was comfortable giving it the three compared to McLaren that I gave the two. Yeah, and see, they didn't change our car up enough for me, which is why they're at a C, and there's too much carbon fiber and not enough paint. So, interesting. I mean, it's it's also exactly what we expected out of Haas. You know, they... They're not investing in themselves very much, which we've discussed ad nauseum with, you know, Gunther leaving and that, you know, winter breakup episode. Um, But... It's, it's, it's what we, it's what we knew we were going to get. Yeah. Right. I wasn't expecting a lot out of them. So. No. Yeah. (sighs) Okay. This is the one I want to, I'm really interested to hear your opinion on. So what do you think about steaks livery? 
Well, as you can see in our rundown, what I have listed is in all caps. It's fucking green. That's what I yeah. think. Like, where's the monster sponsorship, <laughs> right? Like, that's the level of green we're getting. Yeah, you would think that you would have that, like, a little bit of green from the monster at McLaren, but no. But before we dive into more of our thoughts on the livery itself, which is exclamation point green, exclamation point, um, the stake name as a sponsor is in a little bit of hot water these days. Do, um, and we already knew that, like, due to the gambling and advertisement rules in some countries, not the United States for obvious reasons, um, Sauber will have to run as the kick F1 team in certain countries, certain races. So we knew that. But now Swiss authorities are getting involved. Obviously, the team is based in Switzerland because they're concerned about stakes legal compliance with you know, Switzerland national laws. Um, stake says that they are doing everything by the book and they're just removing stake off, you know, from the car, you know, for due diligence reasons while the investigation is ongoing. Um, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know specifically which races we're going to be seeing kick versus stake. Um, that said, Ted Kravitz will be calling the car Sauber anyway. So does it really only matter? one season of it. So who really cares? Two seasons. <laughs> two seasons. Oh, that's right. Two seasons. 25. God. Years are so hard for me. Years and time. time. Is weird. I just can't. Time is hard. Let's say it. Yes. Let's say that. Uh, yeah. No, it's very green. Uh, when I saw it, I was like, this car looks like the Incredible Hulk. Just put a little bit of purple. And then, like, you can move Hulkenberg over. And then, you know, Hulk smash. Um, it is a lot. I don't love it. I just want to know. Because this is F1, and this is a professional sports team. You've got layers of management. You have a lot of people in all these design meetings, a lot of people in the big meetings. Everyone had to approve this car. <laughs> what are they yeah. drink? Are they drinking all of Botas's gin over there? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, who approved this car? I don't know. <laughs> So, here's the thing. I like, don't like it, but I can respect the hell out of it. Like, I... I can. I, I can, because you're going to look at this car streaking by you at a race, and you're like, oh, I know exactly what car that is. Whereas last year with Alfa Romeo, you never knew that car was doing anything unless it was in the wall. That's fair. It is an improvement from last year's car. It is it is bold. I don't like it at all, but I can respect it. So I I can't I don't know if I will use the word respect. Um I will give them credit for being different sure. and for wanting to stand out. Yes. But also like you could have done like then do the whole car green though. Like that's what I think it is. It's like oh, we're just going to do all carbon fiber and then a little streak of black so we stand out. Do the whole car lime green then if you really want to stand out. I don't know how many people would have approved that at the executive meeting, but uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't love it. I don't love it. Yeah, I mean, it is... it is. And it all, I, think, I think it also comes down to like the choice of paint color because that green is green it is it is loud and it is visible and it is a choice right and but I, I mean the electric color is fine I just think they took an easy way out of like let's do the whole car carbon fiber and then just a streak of color you know what I, like they, there's no de- yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's no design that went into the livery I just feel like it's kind of an easy choice that that is true and I think that comes from the fact that other than, you know, what sponsors Botas and Joe are are bringing to the table, they don't really have a lot of sponsorship that isn't no. their, their named sponsor, Stake and Kick. So Stake and Kick really get the, you know, they get the first right of, of decision. We'll talk about, you know, some, some cars that are a little bit more cluttered with um, advertisers as we as we go on. Um, but, you know, I I don't like it, but I don't hate it. Okay, so what did you give this car? I actually gave this car a four out of five. This is where we start to divide, Catherine. Oh, yeah. Um, I gave it a solid D. <laughs> solid D. I, I appreciate the electric color. 
but I the the design if you're looking at full design of livery I just I think they could have done more so we'll see that's fair. if they do an alternative livery that's all lime green and like oh my cool gosh. with like some like motion lines I'll love it but I just we could be having a different conversation out. yes yeah so oh you know what we should do at the end of the year Catherine we should pick our favorite alternative livery oh 100 percent yes love 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 Speaking of yeah. alternative liveries that I love, let's move on to Williams. <laughs> oh, golf livery, my beloved. <laughs> oh, I love, love, love. I have it in my notes of like, I'm just waiting for the golf alternative livery to come out because I yes. loved it last year. Um, this year's livery, I'm not 100% convinced that they've changed it, to be completely honest. I see the small little changes. <laughs> I see the light blue accent. I like it. I liked Williams livery last year. I like it again this year. I think they have the best sponsorship branding of anybody with the Duracell battery. Um, and I will love that until forever. When it came oh, yeah. out last year, it was like, oh my God, this is genius. Um, but I'm, it, there's very minimal changes. You can tell they added light blue accents, which I really do like. I think it makes the other darker blue really pop. Um, but... Yeah, it, it's not a huge change from last year. I I don't love it. I I think, I, I I honestly don't. I Obviously, knew this is I love, where we started to diverge. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's just I think that you know compare because I looked I, I I pulled up side by side pictures of, of this year's livery and last year's livery and this year's livery is just so much patchier than last year's and it's like you have the bits of color around the sponsorship but then everywhere else is the carbon um i think it's funny that you know haas's team principal's name is plastered to the side of their car and we're gonna see come out oh my god everywhere um but i i just i i don't love how patchy it is and it it really you know the the way that they've got these like harsh lines between here's a bit of navy and here's the the black it's just it's a little it's a little just too like pixelated choppy. for me choppy pixelated yeah. things like and obviously i i love the duracell bit um i you know 100 out of 10 for the duracell but i'm gonna have to give this car a three out of five okay so we aren't too far on this one i give it a b okay I just, like, I can't go lower because of the Duracell battery. <laughs> Honestly, like, it it's so good. It's so good. I love it. It's my favorite thing that's happened in a really long time. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, I but I see your points. I completely agree. Um, it is very choppy. I do like the light blue accents, though. I know I said it before, but I think it's just because, like, it reminds me of the, the golf alternative livery. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. It is what it is. Um. Okay, so uh, let's talk about it. <laughs> Elephant in the room. Um, so Alpine. Hmm. I just I just want to set the stage here. So they tease on all socials pink camo, For and I'm days. like, wow, this is intriguing. This is interesting. Like, what's under the hood? Couldn't tell you. Absolutely have no idea. Pink camo, though, is intriguing. I like the paint. I know they do pink. Let, let's see where this brings us. And then it brings us not one but two cars that are basically identical, <laughs> equally as horrible, and full of carbon fiber. Yep. W- where is this pink camo that you teased? Where? Is this an alternative livery that we're just, like, maybe going to see for one or two races? What are you doing, Alpine? What are you doing? Yeah. I hate it. I, I, this, I, this, I, I, I hate it. I hate it so much. This actually really worried me when Alpine's car dropped and just seeing how much carbon fiber we were getting out of all of the cars that had been released so far. And I was terrified that this was going to mean that this was going to be a nightmare fortunately we will discuss how things change for the better but to just i have a lot of thoughts 
on A, the car, and B, how they handled reaction to the car. Um, first, I want to point out, and I, I, I heard about this today, is apparently the actual Alpine F1 team livery designers were not the people who designed the car. It was some, they brought in some artist to, to design the car. And that's why if you're looking at a top view, you see all those like geometric angles that you're really not going to see from most angles of television, except for like the helicopter view. Um, so not my favorite, um, no. but I can't tell the difference between the blue car and the pink car. I was watching another um, reaction video and they were like, here's the blue car. And I was like, that's very pink. And they're like, here's the pink car. And I'm like, that's very blue. So I don't know which car is which. Um, And when you consider how awesome the merch that they've been publicizing lately looks, the, the car is just one of the world's biggest downers. No, it's, 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 it's a miss. It's a complete yeah. miss, honestly. I think they could have done, like, pink and blue and black. Like, you could do something so cool. They've done the whole Pepto-Bismol car before, which I think is so Bring much better back, than what's please. going on now. Bring it back. Do something. The pink camo, yeah, it's not, doesn't scream F1, but it's better than what you have. I don't know. This was, I gave this a solid F. Solid F. Oh, this this is a one, but I also want to vent about my other reasons for, for it, it, it pissing me off. Um, cause like I, one of the things that I, I actually am the most mad about is how Alpine reacted to the fan reaction. Cause the fan reaction was justifiably negative and all they were doing is making fun of it, which, you know, I know that they can't come out and say, you know, we had to strip back as much pain as possible because our car is going to be slow because we've had, you know, last season, which is a, is a disaster. So we need every benefit and every advantage as possible. Um, and I know that they can't just come out and say that, but belittling your fans about your ugly car is not the way to go. Um, no. And, you know, with the amount of celebrities that have invested into this team, they had every opportunity to make a big statement with a really cool car and instead we have two downers yeah i they it's like i said it's just a complete miss and i think them not reacting well to the reactions is also just you know not a good look yeah it's it's a fail yep maybe they'll have a cool alternative though if they bring the pink camo to the alternative i think it would be cool. I just want to see something different. Bring back a Pepto Bismol car for a race or two. I just this is it's so bad, Catherine. Like I, no, I mean they the only bits of color so, are so on the sponsor logos, right? And it's so forgettable too. It's like one, your team is already basically irrelevant to us, and now you're going to give us two cars that give nothing. Like what are they doing? They're they're almost mm-hmm. trying to make themselves forgettable. Yeah. Which Maybe probably I'm a little harsh on I, But they haven't really given us much to work with, let's be real. Like, their car was a disaster. I don't know if it's fully warranted, but it's also fully not warranted. Not not warranted? I don't know. Not, not. My double negatives yeah. here, but not that. It, uh, it's it's yeah, just, anyways. it's not, it's not good. I don't like it. No. Sorry. Not into it. Uh, I do like some of their social videos around their drops though not necessarily the 100%. car but the driver suit and the helmets um I do like what they're doing with their socials of like making them different I feel like theirs yeah. was different than everybody else's um so I will you know give them props there but everything else sucked so. Yeah, clearly the, the livery designers were helping out the merch designers when they weren't allowed to be working on the car. Um, and they, they've come up with some great stuff. Like we, like I said, the, the merch looks amazing. The merch they have is that cool. like blue and pink gradient shirt that I like I would wear that um while working out. Um, not in like real life. But I, you know, the, like it's it's things that I would look at and be like, I would buy that merch. Um, but Catherine the, is the not cars gonna amiss. actively wear a alpine shirt out in public but she will wear it in the comfort of her own home (laughs) correct (laughs) love 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 look 90 percent of my wardrobe is this color so (laughs) well that's 90 percent of their car so it works (laughs) (laughs) that's fair that's fair you got me there 
Oh, gosh. Okay. So I'm ready to stop talking about Alpine because it's just depressing in yeah. every facet. Um, but moving on to V Carb, JV Red Bull, formerly known like Cash as Cash Tor- No, it's a Team Carbo Load. I think that's what I'm <laughs> yeah. just going to start calling it. Um, now, this is a livery. Oh my God, I love it. It's just great. The colors, they pop. It's super bold. I love the font. I love everything they've done. Um, there's a huge bull on it. So moving more, you know, to Toro Rosso of the past and being in line of being the second Red Bull team. Um, still not convinced that they're two separate teams just based on branding and everything. But I really like it. You know what it reminded me of? And I don't know if it's completely accurate or if it's just my mind and my memory. It looks like one of those like classic Hot Wheels cars that like has the yeah. cool lighting on it with lots of color. Um, it's giving me that vibe and I'm not mad about it. I really like this livery. Love this livery. I love everything about it. They did really well with this. Yes, it's definitely giving Toro Rosso, but with current sponsors. And I know some people aren't a big fan of like the red and the white, but I I took one look at this car and said, oh, thank God the rest of, you know, all of the livery drops aren't going to be terribly depressing. Um, you know, this this car just looks like what a Formula One car should look like. Right, exactly. Period. They went all paint probably because their car is going to be super fast and they don't need the extra few hundredths of a second. So they went for it with the paint. Yeah. Um, but I, this is an F1 car. This got me excited to see the rest of the cars and like kind of gave me hope that they weren't all going to suck. Yeah, I actually, since I forgot timing wise um when they were gonna actually drop this livery because it was they they announced the schedule for february 8th and it was february 8th in europe but in the united states it was like 10 30 at night you know 11 30 at night so i'm like waiting for this car to drop i forgot that i am also an hour ahead of the of you know what time it is in las vegas here in arizona because we don't change time daily daylight savings time right um so i'm like waiting i'm also tired and want to go to bed but i'm waiting for this car and this car was absolutely worth the wait oh yeah no it was great love it yeah obsessed love it five out of five I, i i yeah a if I gave pluses and minuses, it'd be an A plus, but it's just an A. Solid yeah. A. Um, okay. Then, and then we kind of like drop down a little bit, but mm-hmm. Aston Martin. Um, I have a few thoughts, but Catherine, I want to hear your thoughts on Aston Martin first. I feel like Aston Martin like painted the car and then forgot to put a design on it. Like, <laughs> it's... You know, there is no the, design. It's just one color. Yeah, it's just like and green. Like, there, there are some yellow accents, but there were more yellow accents on last year's car. Um, I had to look at pictures to to confirm that because I didn't think so. Um, but I literally have written in my it, notes. I think I need a microscope to identify the changes from previ- from prior year. And clearly, you can tell I've been busy season using prior year instead of last year. Um, yeah. But yeah, like this. I can barely tell the changes. There's less, a few less high, like highlights of yellow, whatever, but there's no difference. It's the same car. It's a different yeah. shade of green if you look closely, but like barely. Yeah, it, it, it really, it, it kind of disappoints. It, it's really, you know, not what we expect out of an Aston Martin that had such a great first half of last season. And that is, you know, expecting to kind of continue performing above expectation um and so I just I I'm not wowed by it I'm not wowed but I have another like not another but a kind of different point of view or maybe a hot take is that this is just like their classic look like this is what they're going for they're sticking to it I give them you know the respect I respect it that they're just like, this is our vibe. This is our look. We're going to continue. We're not trying to be anybody else. This is Aston Martin. Done. I appreciate that there's a lot of paint. There's a lot of color. Like, you'll be able to be like, that's Aston Martin. Um, So I do appreciate it from that perspective. But I do also like to see things change 
and I like the fun designs, but at the same time, I do appreciate and respect that they're just like, this is our look. We're sticking to it. Yeah, I will credit that, you know, they were able to strip back the the paint for for the carbon in a way that feels like a proper gradient rather right. than just stripped back in stripes. So I, I yes. give them credit for that. I still give it a three yeah. out of five. I give it a B. Okay. So. Okay. I I don't I don't hate it, but it's not like wow. I also feel like I was pretty liberal with my Bs. Um, but I'd say it's a lower B, but definitely a B. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. So. Yeah. Oh, and now we start to breach the top. Um, so Ferrari. I am just going to say it. I was kind of hoping that they would come out and shock the world with a black and white Ferrari a la the Vegas wing because I loved the Las Vegas wing last year. Just the black and white. I thought it was so cool. I was like, how cool would it be for Ferrari just to be like, screw all of you. Here's our black car instead of it being red. Um, I think it'd be cool for them to do an alternative, just black and white, like super old school, like the old way, like they did that throwback wing um, in Vegas. I loved it. Um, but alas, it is red. Uh, it is red. There are some changes though. I do like the movement lines in yellow and white being like the highlight. Last year, it was just red car. This year, we've got some movement. I like the font. I like the numbers. Um, some of the sponsorships are like moved a little bit but not much uh if we weren't giving like mcdonald's employees at monza <laughs> last year we're definitely giving M- mcdonald's yeah. employees all season this year um yeah. but i i do i like it i don't know i like it i do yeah i, I, I also like it, but, oh no, no i i do like this car yeah yeah, oh. I, was, I was terrified that this was going to be an all-black car, and I was actually surprised that there's less carbon fiber on this than car last than last year. year's. Like, they had it on the good. sides those cutouts where there were a couple sponsorship logos slapped on. They're, like, that's gone. It's all red now. Um, I. Yeah. I think the the mustard and mayonnaise um, drizzles are an interesting choice, um, but you know I I don't hate it. It it does it does kind of harken back to the you know the the shell um, you know sponsors. Obviously, shell is still a sponsor, but like you know more of that that yellow and and white you know involvement. Um, and I know that you can kind of go you know different ways on whether you like it or not. Um, and I don't, not you, but like people. Um, but I I don't hate it. I, I don't hate this car. Yeah. No, I think it's good. I'm excited. Our season's yeah. still going to suck, but at least we'll look good <laughs> doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so just because this one, like, kind of gave me, like, a little bit of a, res- like, I responded to it and I got excited, I gave this an A. Not just because I'm a Ferrari fan, um, but I do like the change it's not just plain black and red like they could have done they did put some design into it so i appreciate that so i gave it an a yeah and i gave it a four out of five which is yeah, high praise for me that. apparently if we look at my my other grades <laughs> yeah uh no i i think it's a good car I, i'm again i'm excited to see their alternatives or uh whatever they do they always kind of go back to like historical things, which I like and appreciate. So for like their uh, driver suits and their cars. So I'm excited to see what they have for the the rest of the season. But, oh, and then we come to Mercedes. I was actually really worried. I was like, it's going to be an all black car and that's all we're going to get. I was very surprised to see the silver Mm-hmm. not so there was there's some variation from last year um I don't it pains me to say this but like I don't hate it but I think it's really just because it was like we all thought it was just gonna be all black so seeing more than all black I I don't hate it I kind of like it yeah, when they when they released a preview of the F1 Academy livery and it was just a plain black car I was like oh my god this is this is going to be awful this is going to be 
a nightmare. Um, but they they took the the historic. They went back to you know the silver arrow, silver versions of the car and the black car, and they really said porque no los dos and did both. Um, and I I really appreciate it. I really like this car, which you know very much pains me to say as a not Mercedes fan. <laughs> as a not mercedes fan uh yeah, yeah no i like i like the silver arrow i i'm ugh, last year those neon numbers drove oh me insane i know it had to do with the monster sponsorship again monster left mercedes what they went to mclaren um they got rid of the weird out of place neon green and i think the numbers are black now with like a white outline or like a silver outline, whatever, but um, they did change that and it looks so much better. Now the car looks complete. Like before it was super random having just neon numbers. It made no sense. Now the car looks fully designed as one car and there's not like a random piece of it. Uh, so I, I do like this car. Yeah, I and I'm sure once once both Lewis's and George's cars come out on track, we will see the, you know, they, they always do like a little bit of paint highlights to differentiate from which car, which car is, is which, you know, blue had the, or George had the blue neon, Lewis had the yellow. Um, so I'm sure we'll get a little bit of that, which I can I can live with, but I, I really appreciate what they did with this car. Um, I, I yeah. think that it's, they, they put a little bit more red on the, on the air intake, um, which I also, you know, don't mind and i think that you know the car is what drove lewis to ferrari um but at least it'll be fun to look at on track yeah yeah what did you give this car i actually gave this car five. Oh wow i'm surprised yeah, yeah. I, I gave the, this this is this is one of my my top cars of of this uh livery drop this season everyone Pause the world. Catherine is appreciating something coming out of Mercedes. Yep. Hell has frozen over. <laughs> Indeed. No, I think my B is like a high B. Again, like if you look at some of the other Bs I've given, um, this is the highest of the Bs, I would say. We're borderline. Sure. This is like an 89.4 and your professor will not round up for you. Oh, um, that's the grade. That's the grade I'm giving Mercedes. <laughs> So. I'm glad I'm not in school anymore. <laughs> oh my God, right? Uh, okay. The last but not least, Red Bull. It's the same car. It's the same car. But here's the thing. Like, there's paint. And it yes. looks good. And, like, I don't hate it. I've never hated the livery. I really like – I mean, I really like their livery. I think it really stands out. They're true to their sponsorship of Red Bull – I, you know, it's the Red Bull colors. Um, there's minimal, minimal changes, but I like it. I don't hate it. I, I think the one thing for me though, is that Red Bull is such a extreme sport, super creative. Let's do all of these crazy things. I feel like with that big of creative in the company, you could come up with the cooler, more creative livery. But if it's not broke, don't fix it. So yeah. I, I do like it. I just, I don't see any changes. Yeah, I think that there have been Red Bull incarnations of this livery in the past that have been a little bit bolder. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I I really like it. I like that the body of the car is a dark navy it's not actually black um and yeah. i had to look very hard at those pictures to, to figure that out like I, I appreciate that it's you know it'll be it'll be Paint. difficult to um actually tell when they start stripping the pan off to to get a couple more seconds you know off off of it you know as the season goes on um but i i, I appreciate what they have done here and i give it a four out of five and yes my four is probably out of bias but i like it more which is why i'm not giving it a three because some of those threes that i gave well, were like you're lucky to be a three threes <laughs> um i actually gave this an a so I okay. I know. Stop the world. <laughs> I know. Um, no, but I. I mean, you know what they say. Everyone hate, or you hate us because you ain't us or whatever, and that's like a hundred percent why I don't like Red Bull. I wouldn't say I don't like them. I just am very critical of them because they're not Ferrari. Yeah. Um, but I will give credit where credit is due. It's all paint. They're not taking the easy way out and they're sticking true to their team. So I, I think it's a good livery. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Agreed. 
So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so we did also get some helmet drops. Not all of them yes. are out yet, but we did get some. And I like some and I hate some. So. Agreed. Do you want to start with our least favorite or our, our uh, top favorite? Um. Let's let's do least favorite first, and then then go into to, okay. to, to favorite favorites. Um, why don't you, do you want to want to do like we picked three each? So do you want to do like back and forth one after another? Sure. Okay. So I will start off with oh. my first least least favorite, um, which is Lance Strolls. It's too much green chrome. I'm sorry. I picked the same one. Of course we did. I said okay. So I. But it's like I can't tell if it's just really overproduced and terrible lighting, so it looks That's like my question psychotic, too. or if it's just actually like we went for the green Iron Man look, like that. I just I don't know. So yeah, I don't love it. it's 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 just it's too much questions because like if you look at like side by side, you know his helmet versus Fernando's helmet, like you like Fernando's helmet looks like a helmet, um, Lance's looks like a mock up. Like a really mm-hmm. fancy mock-up. Um, hopefully, it's better in person. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't like it though. Either way, yeah. if it's bad, like bad lining, and it's not as chromey as it looks, or if it is super chromey and we're going like full Iron Man style, uh, I don't like either one. So he was definitely in the bottom for me. Yeah. So, what about your? What about your uh, second? Another one in your bottom. Uh, that would be Nico Hulkenberg. I just don't love the neon green splatter paint star bits in, in the white. It, it just, it wasn't my favorite. Yeah. I, he, he was almost in my bottom, mm. but, um, it's kind of hard to ignore the cringeworthy, cringeworthy helmet of Logan Sargent. America. <laughs> I'm an American driver. Did you know I'm from America? Did you know that I am the only American driver? Um, Like, he had a cool alternate helmet for one of the uh, U.S. races last year, and there was, like, an eagle or whatever. Like, that was cool. Do it for one race. You don't need America all over you for every race. I just – it was a lot. It was a lot for me. Yeah, yeah. It's – it was – not almost in my bottom three, but it's definitely not my favorite either. Sorry, no. Lance. Logan. Mm. <laughs> both of them. Uh, both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Lance and Logan, they're, they're down there. And then what about your an, your last one in your bottom? Um, unfortunately, I have to give it to Alex Albon. I just, there's something about that helmet that I just really don't enjoy. It's like, I don't know if it's like the color choice of the pink that it's, everything is matte uh, that that does like i i just i can't interesting okay yeah um okay yeah. i in a complete shock to probably everybody uh my last one in the bottom is both helmets from ferrari i hate them really they're so bad i do not like really? them i know I know. I just, I don't like them. I just, it's weird. They're, they're just like, I don't know. They're not doing it for me. I don't like it at all. Interesting. Very interesting. But I hate them both. I hope they, I hope they change them a lot during the season because I don't like them. Well, I mean, Charles had some awesome alternate liveries like the football stadium livery that he had last year in Miami was one of my favorite helmets or livery helmet of, of, you know, the entire season. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very surprised at that choice. I know. I know. Me too. But I, I can't, they're, they're just so bad. So bad. Wow. Okay. So for top helmets, I do have a third, second, first place. Um, so I think we can both agree on the absolute best helmet. I don't think it, we even need to, I, like, I, beat I, around I, the bush. I, There's I, only one helmet sure. that is amazing. It's Lando. Yes. But actually, should be come, come as no surprise. Actually, I disagree. Lando's my second favorite. What? Yes. Oh, my gosh, Catherine. No. Lando's is so good with the monster sponsorship, and it, it's oh my, so I, cool and different. I love, I love it. it. It's great. I just like Yuki's helmet more. 
Did I miss Yuki's? Look, y- you need to look at Yuki's helmet. Oh my gosh, wait. Helmet. While you're looking at this, um, I will tell you that my third favorite helmet is actually Carlos's because I prefer, you know, between Charles and Carlos, I prefer the black bits on Carlos's helmet. So that put that one in my in my top three. So that's why I'm a little shocked that you hated them both. Oh, Yuki's is cool. Yeah. I do like it, but I still think Lando's is better. Lando always has the best helmets, though. He does. Always. The basketball, the floaty. Oh, um, the, 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 the one with, like, all of the stickers of all of his hundred races, that by yes. far is the coolest helmet I've ever oh, seen. Oh, 100%. Um, but no, I think Lando's is the best. I also like Zhou Guan Yu's. Yeah, his is, his is, is good. It, it's good, too. Yeah. yeah. He also had a really cool. fun leather leather one last year. That was awesome. Yeah, that was so cool. Um, but yeah. Okay, so you have Yuki, Lando. And Carlos. Um, Carlos. Oh, God, Carlos mm-hmm. is so bad. Um, okay, so I have Lando, Joe, and then I have Alex Albon, actually. Okay. So, I know. So look at us swapping some from the the bottom to the top. But I love the pink and the blue. I love that it's all matte. I think the like design of it is really cool and different. I love the matte. I don't know. It's cool. I'm just not I'm into like, it. This is just different. I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. I'm yeah, a fan. Just... You, 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 it's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> um well also like maybe it's biased because like I was looking at his and sergeants next to each other and sergeants is just so bad so maybe that's why I thought it was so good but at the same time like I love that it's all matte I love how it's not like chromed out I love the the blue and the pink I think I've always loved blue and pink together though so I really I like the contrast um but no I I definitely think he is a, a good helmet this year so. Okay. Okay. We'll have to pick our favorite, like alternative or alternate helmet as well with our alternate. Oh, a- absolutely. At some point. I, I, I hope that the drivers bring it like, like they did last year, you know, between Lando and Charles, we should have some really fun ones. Yeah. Ooh, you know what I'm re- really looking forward to? Joe Guan Yu's, um, China helmet, helmet for China. Yes. I do. I just got way too excited about a helmet. Um, yeah. But no, I'm so excited because Yuki always does a cool one for Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, and he Yuki does have good helmets, but I feel like Zhou Guan Yu just has a great design team. I'm not even going to say stylist. I feel like he just has a whole design team around him. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what he does for China. We, we're in February. And we haven't heard anything negative about China yet. So I feel like China might happen this year. Fingers we can only hope. Yeah. So going back to the cars before we wrap this up, um, we have to pick our livery of the year and our carbon fiber nightmare of the year. Uh, okay, that's easy for me. Livery of the year is team carbohydrate. Yeah. V-carb. V- Visa, cash app, Visa, cash RB2. app, racing bulls or RB or whatever. I can't get over the racing bulls. I'm going to mess up this name. It's not even racing long. bulls. It's just RB. I know, but it yeah. came out like they were going to be racing bulls, and that's just ingrained in my head. And now they're, you know, the carb, B carb, team car- carbohydrate, JV, Toro Rosso. I'm, ne- I'm never going to actually call them their real name. That is, that will be my thing. That's, I can't. I just, yeah. Visa Cash App RB is just too much. I refuse. Yeah. And then our carbon fiber nightmare of the year, I think it goes without saying, it is Alpine and also Alpine. Yeah, Alpine 1 and Alpine 2. Alpine yeah. pink and Alpine blue. Uh, yeah, it's just so bad. I hate it. Yeah. I hate this a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So there is one more livery I want to talk about. That yeah. is not an F1 car, but it's an F1 Academy car. Uh, yeah. So Charlotte Tilbury was announced as a team sponsor this year for F1 Academy. It is the first female founded company to be a sponsor, uh, which I think is really cool. And also their livery is very true to the brand and it's very just breaking 
I would say not breaking barriers, but it's very different than any F1 livery, I think. Incredibly. And I I don't love the design, but I appreciate them being like, we are this brand, we are here in F1, you know, bursting onto the scene in F1 Academy, and this is what we're going to do, and we're going to be us, and that's that. I think it's really cool. I respect them a lot for doing that. And not just being like, oh, it's, you know, Formula One, it's motorsport. We have to be super masculine and make this just carbon fiber and primary colors. Like, there's lips on it. There's lipstick. There's brown. Like, I think it's cool that they went that route. So Yeah, I, I can. I, I that can, is one that I, I want to talk about. I can respect it. I can absolutely respect it. I was also really surprised, and I, we talked about this in our, our F1 Academy recap for last season, is um, when they announced that F1 teams were going to be partnering with drivers, there were going to be five um, non-team sponsors coming in. And we saw that Red Bull, as in the organization itself, was one of them taking, um, so now Red Bull B-Carb and Red Bull Racing have three drivers. Um, but we are curious to see who the other other non-team sponsors were going to be and charlotte tilbury was not even on the bottom of my list of of potential sponsors because it wasn't even a thought they weren't on my planet of lists at all completely not um i know but i love it. it i i love it i think it's a great sponsorship whether we like the livery or not i love this sponsorship and this this partnership Love. Yeah, I, I love the idea of, of bringing, you know, female founded and female marketed sponsorships into motorsport because you don't see a lot of that at all in any level. So no. might as well start with what will hopefully become the pinnacle of women's motor racing. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. And we'll Yay. have more on the F1 Academy in a few weeks once we get closer to their season opener. Yes. We can never talk about them enough, so let's we do love some them. whole episodes. We love them. Yeah. Oh, well, my, in closing, uh, I'm not pleasantly surprised, but, like, I feel like liveries across the board are pretty average this year. Nothing, yeah. Like, besides V-Carb, nothing was, like, blowing me out of the water, so I think it was pretty average. Yeah, it, it, you know, they definitely improved once we got past the Alpine launch, um, because the Alpine launch was definitely the lowest of the low. So I, I, it's, it's one step closer to getting us actual cars on track. I know that they've been doing shakedowns in Barcelona this week. So we have had cars on track, but like officially testing is this week. We are here. Uh, Drive to Survive is coming up. Um, We are, we are one step closer to Bahrain. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. With that all being said, next week we will have our 2024 season predictions. Hi. I can't believe we made it through the winter break. We're already there. Where has the time gone? Honestly, Catherine, to go completely off topic, I love that busy season for me is like January and February. And it literally gets me to the day before Drive to Survive comes out. And then I have Drive to Survive. And then we have the season. So as much as I hate busy season, it just takes my mind off of waiting around for the season to start. And so now like I'm done on Thursday, drive to survive comes out on Friday. I'll stay up all night Thursday, watching it into Friday morning and be done before, you know, a reasonable time on Friday. So it's really working out well for me. Yeah, absolutely. This, this, this works out real well. I'm excited to, you know, start watching wall to ball motorsport. You know, I, you know, take a break from ha- watching Sports Center all day, and um, you know, I will take watching preseason testing over two hours of the Pat McAfee show any day. Oh yeah, well, I mean, you want to know my favorite time of day is the seven minutes yes. of commercials between the end of Pat McAfee and the beginning of Sports Center. I don't know if I've watched Sports Center in like a year. Yeah. No, that's a lie. I watch it every morning, but it's, I know it's not like live. So I get the last nights because whenever I'm watching it at six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning, it's five o'clock or nah, 
five hours behind that two o'clock in the morning on the west coast so i know i'm not getting a live version so no. i like truly have not watched it in a long time but i still get my sports updates so that's fair yeah yeah, yeah. completely off track well that has been the podcast that has been our livery reactions livery thoughts and feels like i said we will have our 2024 season predictions next week that's been the podcast thanks for going off track with us guys